Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the channel. Uh, this is going to be an interview with Alex, who is one. He's the, the spirit that guides Maya Protocol. Maya Protocol launch is right around the corner, so I'm glad I get to pick his brain and uh, interview him for Maya Protocol. We're going to ask some questions from the community. We're talk about what Maya Protocol is and spend a lot, if not most of the time, focused on the launch, which is in about a week, like just about a week from now. So with that, um, yeah, Alex, really quick, just so people know where to find you. This is Alex's Twitter. If you want to go follow him over there, at Alex Smith. I assume that's a pseudonym, and that is super yeah. creative. <laughs> I thought that was super <laughs> cool. Uh, so go and give him a follow over on Twitter uh, if you're interested in giving him a follow over there. So uh, first question I got, well, first off, thanks. Thanks for jumping on with me. No, thank you for having us. Okay, cool. So what is Maya Protocol, and why do we need it? Yeah, um, well... My protocol is essentially a decentralized currency exchange uh, uh, blockchain, which allows you to swap between assets of different chains, native assets of different chains, without the use of wrapping or pegging, uh, which would be kind of, uh, as a very simple analogy, is uh, you know when you're using um, centralized exchanges, they are essentially just, trading IOUs, and then you claim uh, when you want to withdraw to your to your wallet or to your fiat account, uh, you claim, and then as a bank, they'll just, you know, deposit to you, but then you're trusting the central exchange in the meantime. And when, you, when you're using bridges, uh, uh, wrapping and pegging, it's more like trading IOUs than the actual real deals. So if you're trading IOUs, you're also trusting the the claimability of that IOU for the real deal in the future, um, and it, 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 in that case, Maya is like actually putting the gold on the ship, and then having the ship sail away to the other continent to deliver you your gold, but in just seconds um, and between different chains. So that's kind of a fun a fun analogy, and. Uh, yeah, Maya is born out of, a, out of a friendly fork of Thorchain. Thorchain already does this today, uh, and they've been doing it for two years now, um, and they're killing it. So highly encourage you to go find out more about Thorchain if you don't know about it. I mean, this is your first time listening to this. Uh, so now the question st still stands, why is Maya here if Thorchain is already there? Yeah. Uh, well, because this is a very important infrastructure thing. You're talking about the backbone of of blockchain uh, in the future, like what's routing all of the liquidity across blockchain and in all, all of the blockchain space. And if you have such an important infrastructure thing, you kind of want reliability and redundancy. So I always say like, it's like flying a jet with one engine versus two engines. I feel more comfortable with two personally. Not so uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like, it's like, it's like the Visa and MasterCard, you know? Gotcha. Uh, banks, banks. At the end of the day, Visa and Mastercard don't issue uh, uh, cards directly. Just like Thorchain and Maya are not really interested in the retail uh, space directly. Rather, banks usually issue uh, 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 credit cards on, on both, and they always use both to keep both alive. Just in case one goes down, they have the other. So you'll see, you'll find almost any bank in the world has both so they'll issue a card for mastercard they'll issue a card for visa and they just issue them uh, uh randomly between each other obviously with some sort of mechanism or algorithm right but with the intent of routing their transactions to both of them uh such that in the future if something happens they, they're using the, it's also when you're when you are purchasing with suppliers you like to have kind of two suppliers for each thing right just in case uh, and i wanted so, to likewise oh. I want to kind of back up to something you said about it being the backbone of DeFi infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think some people might be like, what exactly are you talking about there? So what exactly do you mean about it being the backbone of, of DeFi infrastructure moving forward, potentially? Yeah, well, you have several things. Uh, one is just moving assets around, right? And right now we kind of, have to rely on centralized services, which is why centralized services have so much power and why and why they're so big. 
And uh, that's a problem because uh, Satoshi Nakamoto founded Bitcoin, you know, and it's great and decentralized. And then we got Vitalik doing Ethereum and it's great and decentralized. But if you want to move between them, you use a centralized party, then what's the point? Right. right. So, yeah. so one thing is moving, <laughs> just, just moving assets around. Uh, then there's also uh, pricing assets. Uh, right now, we also rely on on the biggest uh, kind of volume trader of an asset, which in this case mostly is Binance for mm -hmm. most assets. And they're what, what it's called a price leader. They set the price uh, of the token. But how they set it internally is through trading, of course, on the platform. So it, yeah. it is market driven, but it's still them that set the price for the rest of the ecosystem. And we all arbitrage or assets against diamonds gotcha. at, the end, okay. at the end of the day. So because of that, uh, there's also this part where Binance as a price setter actually earns and the rest as a, as a price takers lose. Um, so we, we need to put it the other way around uh, gotcha. when, when, when together within my and Thorchain, we become price setters in a faraway future. Okay. And then just uh, having having the the ability to do it as a retail person or whoever you are, just to uh, be able to invest and move assets without permission, without KYC, without any issues. That's just super powerful and very important. And and I call it backbone and infrastructure and backend because that's what it is. Uh, many of your listeners probably use Trust Wallet, that's and what they might not. I was gonna get at yeah. Yeah, what they might not know is that if you see Trust Wallet and you see the assets, you'll see the ability to swap. What? How? This is a non-custodial wallet. Well, they use Thorchain in the back end. You right. won't see Thorchain anywhere. They, I don't think they even have native rune on Trust Wallet yet. Uh, Maybe not. But you, but you can swap uh, right. uh, use, using Thorchain. Just as uh, you, know, you might send an email and you're not really sure about IPs and servers and how is, how is it happening? You just send an email uh, um, and it just says Gmail, you know? It just says trust wallet. Yep. Well, they're actually using a lot of infrastructure behind that does not belong to them. Uh, that, that, uh, that's what Fortune and Maya are building. Yeah, that's kind of what I was kind of, I was gonna allude to is people will be using potentially Maya protocol and already Thorchain for swaps and even the savers, you know, like you've got mm -hmm. SideShift and, um, uh, not side shift, shape shift, DeFi spot that are going to be using Thorchain and potentially Maya on the back end for their savings. Edge, all the different edge wallet, edge, edge wallet, wallet too. Yeah. And people yeah. won't even know it. You could be using it and you won't even know it. Okay. Uh, so yeah. the team, I do want to address because team is usually important to people. I know that everyone's synonymous, but what, let me put this banner up here. The team will stay synonymous. But what experience do they have that at least that you can share that's going to allow you guys to be successful long term? Yeah, well, we, we have a, a five person development team. Uh, I'm not one of them. Uh, I do read code. Uh, I'm just not a, a good coder myself. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, like they all have various experience in, in software development um, or CTO is actually like or tech lead. Uh, it's actually my, my partner since before Maya in, in a software agency, software development agency for clients. Okay. Uh, so, so we do have experience with, with you know, systems in, in stage and systems in production and having a lot of users and traffic and all those sorts of things. Um, we also have uh, one of the most important devs there is, uh, well, Dr. Lilith Samna. You can find him in Discord. Send him a question if you like. Mm -hmm. And we also have Kukulkan. Um, I would say uh, also a key player there because he has a lot of experience in, in AWS and uh, you know he, he's the one doing all the node and cluster launchers and all of that kind of instances and okay. DevOps part of things. Uh, is this the first? And then, is this the first crypto project that you you guys have all kind of worked on? Yeah. So oh, that, cool. that's what I was gonna get to. Uh, <laughs> we also have just experience on Maya and Thorchain. Um, so many crypto projects that you'll find usually go from from being thought of to to being live in a few months, mm -hmm. um, especially if there are smart contracts or or just some vanilla fork. In the case of Maya, we've been at it for two years. Uh, we've operated StageNet chains already several times, 
we have a stagenet now that that you could try out. Uh, cool. And uh, a stagenet essentially means the real deal with real assets, so real Bitcoin, real ETH, real mm -hmm. Rune. Just uh, uh, we all we all agree it's a, a stage environment, so nobody puts too much liquidity behind it. We also underwent six months of audits with okay. Halborn Security. I saw that. Yeah. More, yeah, so so that was definitely an exercise in professionalism and, and kind of rigorous code. That was very enlightening and very, very fun, uh, but very difficult too. And just in, in general, uh, just the, we, we put in the hard work. Uh, so, so here we okay. are. Cool. No, it sounds like, you, I mean, at least you guys have some experience and even, you know, in the in real world experience with AWS and, and whatnot, right? Yeah. But uh, okay. I, I think, yeah, let's move into more of, uh, of some of the launch specifics and walk through some of the, some of what it's going to look like for people, if you're down for that. Mm -hmm. We get this banner out of the way. Share my screen. All right. So this is over on the Maya Protocol uh, docs. I'll put a link to this down in the description if anyone wants to check this out. This is not financial advice from either one of us. Do your own research before you invest in your money, obviously. But we're going to walk through this launch. The, uh, the liquidity auction starts March 7th. And there's really two separate coins that we're, we're going to be talking about with the launch. Because you have an airdrop and you've got the Maya token. And then you've also got Cacao, which will be... Uh, I guess you could say given. What would you say? Distributed. Donated. Donated. Distri distributed, yeah, donated yeah. Uh, through this one-time liquidity auction. So there's 100 million coins total. 90 million of them are going to be given to anybody that participates in a liquidity auction, and that's it. So if you want looking for something with a fair launch, without you know what do they call that? The pre-distributions and the team getting 80, you know, 50 percent of the coins, and then just dumping it later and whatever. They could the team. Right, correct me if I'm wrong here. They could participate and get cacao, but they're doing it with their own personal funds, just like I would, yeah, just like everyone else. Exactly. Every, okay. Everybody's equal, including ourselves. Nobody, nobody gets any special treatment. Uh, Ninety percent of cacao goes out in the and the other ten stays in the for permanent and for protocol only liquidity uh, and use that disposed of by. So. Uh, yeah, it's like the fairest lunch out there. Uh, how you get it is essentially by LPing. So you LP your asset, uh, which we will have five of during the auction, Bitcoin, ETH, Rune, USDT, USDC, both the RC20s. And uh, you, you add them as an LP. And what the protocol will do with the 90 million cacao is uh, uh, finish off your deposit. So make sure it's, it's symmetric and you're having like 50-50 there. Uh, but you're, you, you're keeping your asset. So you're not paying the asset away to buy cacao. The asset stays in your LP position. So we're really giving cacao away. Right. Uh, and that's, that's good because cacao is meant to be a reference of value, a means of exchange, and a utility token. And thus should be as fairly distributed as possible. It should be most of it circulating as possible uh, and, just, uh, and just available in the pools from the start. Gotcha. Uh, so the way that the team earns and the investors and everybody involved these last two years in the project is with a percentage of the cash flows instead. So we, we don't get any utility token from the start. We cannot dump on you. Uh, we just get uh, uh, a percentage of revenues. 10% of the fees generated go to the team and investors. 90% goes to nodes and LPs. Right. Um, well, 80% and then 10% to the reserve to replenish it, which is good. It's a self-replenishing reserve. Um, so because of that, um, the, main, the main thing there is we have no ability to dump on the community. We start with zero cacao. Yeah. Uh, we, we cannot have any sell pressure in the future. We're not vesting over time. Uh, and we, our interests are aligned. I'm not interested in hyping cacao. Because I don't yeah. get anything for having a, 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 a over over uh, hype token. Uh, I just care about real utility, trading volume, and fees, which in the end of the day is what will make Maya succeed for the long term. Or interest and the nodes and LPs is all aligned. We all earn from the fees. We're all right. with the same skin in the game. Yeah, like uh, you, you with the Maya token, right? Isn't that how you guys get paid? Like you're not getting 
you're not really getting anything up front. Like you just said, you don't have any coins that you can then dump and say, oh, I got rich exactly. off the launch. If exactly. Maya doesn't make revenue and fees, and that goes to anybody that has the Maya token, including you guys, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and you guys don't get paid. Exactly. So it has to either work or nobody makes anything. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. And that's good. It, it's the right incentive for us. At, at the end of the day, I'm a true believer in what's incentivized happens. Yeah. Uh, so we are incentivized for trading volume, period. Right. Right. Yes. And what I was going to get at is that that 10% of revenues that we're getting of the fees is tokenized into what we call the Maya token. So the Maya token is very simple. It's just whoever has the Maya token uh, uh, allocation receives the cacao uh, payout every 24 hours. So Which you have that they've, that the, yeah. yeah. And there's, there's 1 million Maya tokens. Some of it will be airdropped. So we can talk more about that later. Yeah. But if you have, uh, so if you have 10% of the Maya tokens, so that would be 100,000 Maya tokens, you get 10% of the 10%. So you would be getting 1% of the fees of the protocol. So we just tokenized it. So it's easier for investors also to, to kind of move around and, and do whatever they need to do or team, people getting the airdrop that can now share uh, in, in the success. Uh, so we, we all kind of uh, can move around, except except for us, the founders, uh, or 15.6% that we have in Maya tokens mm -hmm. is locked up forever. So we can never really sell it. Ah, uh, we can, so it's we, fees or nothing. You can't even, even if Maya token appreciates, you guys yeah, exactly. are locked. Okay. We're locked. Uh, and uh, so the, the sending, the Maya token is blocked by on code. And nodes have no reason to unlock it in the future for any reason. Yeah. Uh, so, because uh, the nodes are the only ones that can really change and affect the code, right? Right. Um, so the only thing we can do is wait for the fees to be paid out in cacao over time and then use that to, to swap it for, for Bitcoin or ETH or whatever in the future. Right. So, and, and it's over time. It's also success-based fee. Uh, so, yeah, we're in it for the long run. Like, we, I need to make sure that my is around for 10 or 20 years to, to make sure, you know, I, I got the, the most of it. Right. Uh, if, if this thing has a lot of volume for a year, people with Maya token would probably have their Maya token appreciate because it would be valued with a P E ratio probably. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can exit and everything's fine and dandy. But if the next year it goes down, like, I, I wasn't able to do anything about it. So right. I, I need to make sure the long-term sustainability is there uh, okay. for as long as can be. So that's great for, for anybody investing in the, in the ecosystem. Makes sense. That um, Everything sounds aligned. You guys definitely thought that through. I mean, we are kind of focused, I guess, on the Maya token. So I do want to at least uh, cover one piece of this that I think is going to be a potential nightmare for everybody in Discord. Because you're going to have people that do not understand the whole snapshots. That mm -hmm. you, it, it, you're going to get an airdrop based on the lowest amount of rune you're holding during the snapshot mm -hmm. and so in this in this graph here you know you've got rune and it shows only like the i think 25 days here but it actually goes for 42 days it goes mm -hmm. an additional 21 days after the liquidity auction mm -hmm. so if you're expecting to get the maya airdrop then you need to have your rune where it needs to be before this snapshot on march march 6th correct yeah so i think the, the best way to understand things is to understand the reasons behind them okay yeah. so what why why 42 days why snapshots why the minimum very simple we are a friendly fork of floor chain our mission is to separate money from state and our interim mission to get there is to have at least two cross-chain protocols live strong and fighting in the in the market yeah so what that means is we're not we're no sushi swap to Uniswap. We're not vampiring away liquidity. We're not looking to to be the next thing, uh, and then deleting the the, the past thing. I, I see sometimes that Maya is called Thorchain 2.0. Thorchain is Thorchain 2.0. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and Maya is its own thing. So what what I mean with that is, if we launch and we vampire away liquidity and Thorchain fails, we fail too. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we, 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 we want redundancy and reliability in the space. 
if we're the only ones left standing, we failed in that mission. So that's not what we want. Because of that, we don't want people using the rune they might already have on Fortune and selling it for Bitcoin or whatever and using that to participate in Maya uh, uh, because then we failed. Again, so we're, we're not doing what we want to happen. So gotcha. is incentivizing people to keep their positions throughout the liquidity auction and thereafter so that what they use to participate in the liquidity auction is coming uh, uh, from other sources of funding. So Bitcoin, you have uh, saved around, ETH, you have maybe some fiat that you're going to convert, leaving your Thor chain and Rune holdings untouched. Um, that is also the reason why the highest weights and or points given to, to Rune is to Rune being in LP positions on Thor chain or as a node on Thor chain. That where it's most productive, X, right? Where it's most productive for right. Thor chain, where, where it should be. Right. And then lower right. if you hold it or if you have it asymmetric. You, you just get a 2x weight or point boost. And then you can, we also need rune, some rune on Maya. If you truly believe in rune and cacao, you can add them on Maya, but that gets a very low multiple, just a 1x. Uh, right. So one quarter of the allocation, because although we need it to then have a chain, and it's a great pool for cross chain believers, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we prefer to incentivize it doing some work on Thor chain instead. Awesome. Okay. So uh, that, now, now that you understand the rationale, how do we implement it? Well, uh, before the liquidity auction starts, you, you have your rune holdings, right? As much as you can. And then we don't want you having a lot of rune on the 6th of March. And then we're throwing uh, it on the 20th of March to participate in the auction. So right. if you do that, we will take your minimum allocation. So in this in this table that you're showing, it's a great table to have. You'll see that uh, Carlos and Bob, they had some rune, but then they had zero for some reason in one of the snapshots. So they, they, their position is taking a zero and yeah. they won't get any my airdrop. Uh, so be like Alice, essentially. <laughs> Alice is always having a stable yeah. amount of rune. Uh, and uh, although she had 120 versus Bob who had 4,000, just the fact that she always constantly had the same amount. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's what will be taken into account for the airdrop. So just be like Alex. Hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> Even it was for real. I should put that on Twitter. Yeah, because I think what's going to happen a lot is people are going to learn about the liquidity auction and then they're going to hear about this airdrop and then they're going to be like, oh, I want the airdrop. And then they're going to try to buy Rune and put it in their wallet not realizing that on the first snapshot, they already didn't have any rune. So they don't even qualify yeah. for an airdrop to begin with. And there's nothing they can do about that, which it's just, yeah. is it is. You got, I guarantee in the discord, that's going to be like a very frequently asked question. I just know it. Um, but okay. <laughs> so that's, that's how this snapshot goes. Like you said, the, the highest weight goes to people in LP positions on Thor chain. Second goes to people holding it in their wallets. And then, uh, the lowest weight goes to people that put it over on uh, in the liquidity auction, uh, essentially. Okay, so let's go back to the roadmap here. I think that's really um, all there is in terms of the airdrop for rune current rune holders. There is also Maya airdrop for uh, those people participating in the tier one of the liquidity auction, right? Would you be able to kind of yeah. share some light on this part here in this in this chart, this 1% of Maya to first 5 million and then 1% of Maya to the next 15 million? Is this like, is it really just 25%, 75% like prorated? Because I see this prorate to tier one liquidity. Or is it like first 5 million get 1% and then like what if the sixth million, right? That million after the 5 million, there's only one extra, like theoretically, mm -hmm. if only six million is raised, does that just one million mm -hmm. get that entire one no. percent? They get one. They get the one fifteenth of the one percent. Okay, got you. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it truly yeah. is. Uh, it truly, I got you. So, so I think let's let's we, we we can backtrack a little. So first, what are tiers? <laughs> oh sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let start, me let's start on that. 
so Boom, tears. Yeah, this is this is perfect. Yeah. Okay. So as you all heard earlier in this talk, people will be adding liquidity, say with a Bitcoin and ETH, and they will get cacao donated for free, right? Mm -hmm. The problem yeah. and a possible attack vector there, it's a PvP game where the person that uh, withdraws the fastest can profit the most if we go into a vicious withdrawing cycle. Yeah. So that's undesirable, right? That means the person sticking up for you will lose while the person just leaving uh, wins. So yeah. we need to have some sort of uh, setup for the game where we benefit the ones that hold on for, for longest, the most, and we give kind of a penalty, some sort of penalty to the people's, people leaving early. And then also together with that, to buy us enough time to bootstrap the trading volume, right? The, the fees, the, the, the mm -hmm. APY, so that after this, all of these lockups kind of end up and uh, um, the protocol is now sustainable and we can expect to maintain the value or grow and not lose, right? Which is something we, we, we need to do. We need to, to grow up and, and be, a, be an adult, have fees, have, have utility. So with that in mind, how it works is when you add liquidity to the, tier, to the liquidity auction, you declare your tier. And Thor Wallet will abstract this away. So I mm -hmm. highly suggest using Thor Wallet. They're the ones kind of building the, the, the most tools for the liquidity auction. And you just select your tier. And there's tier three, tier two, and tier one. Yeah. Um, so this will be, be where you do it. Um, yeah. I, didn't, I was looking over here and I don't see any, I've never used Thor Wallet. And just so yeah. that people know, you don't have to have a Thor Wallet. You can actually, there's X DeFi and MetaMask. So you can use, it looks like any three of those wallets should be okay. Yeah. But what do you know? Is there going to be or, like, or, 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 or you can, or, or you can just import your seed phrase. If you had your wallet somewhere else, say, trust oh, yeah. Wallet, okay, that's just a great import point. your seed phrase and you're fine. Yeah. Maya does, should not show up now. No worries. This will show up later. Week. Where would it be though? Uh, like my pools or what would it look um, like? Probably liquidity pools. Uh, okay. And there will be, a, there will be just a huge banner, like Maya liquidity auction. Okay. Come here, click here. So no cool. worries on that. Um, but yeah, essentially, if you're tier three, you have 30 days where you can only withdraw up to 4.5% of your position. Uh, so during those 30 days, you can withdraw 4.5 every day mm -hmm. of, of that morning's position. Uh, and then at the end of the period, uh, you can withdraw the rest. Uh, or whatever. So after those 30 days, you're free to go in, go out, do whatever. Uh, so you're getting, you're, you have your asset, Bitcoin, and you're being, uh, we're taking 33% away from the tier three as kind of a penalty because they're so sure they're just a month, right? Yeah. So when they give out, give, give away 33% of their position, now they have a return of three, of 1.34x. Uh, which is what shows up here, which is, I think, a fair, a fair return for a month, right? I'd agree. Uh, obviously, take into account also which asset you're you're providing and the permanent loss that can happen. And this is before trading fees. So during those thirty days, your assets will be traded, and that will generate trading fees for you as an LP. So that is on top of this, right? Okay. Um, so now. Uh, so this is those... just to, just to be clear, just in case anyone's confused, this 30 days starts at the end of the liquidity mm -hmm. auction. Mm -hmm. This isn't, exactly. this isn't, yeah. Okay. I just didn't want anyone to think this you're going into the auction and then it starts the auction mm -hmm. ends. And then once the pools are live, 30 days is when this starts. Okay. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Be before those 30 days as a tier three, you can withdraw. Like if you don't like where things are going, you can withdraw your Bitcoin before yeah. the liquidity auction is over and add it again later if you want. That's not a problem. Um, and uh, yeah, during those during the liquidity auction, there's not really any permanent loss or much of a risk since your asset is just there. It's not being there's no, there's away. no swapping happening either. Nothing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Nothing. Exactly. Okay. So then. Can I can I ask you a follow up on this because mm -hmm. with the thirty day a thirty day lockup, um, I did have a question regarding impermanent loss because there's going to mm -hmm. be impermanent loss protection, uh, which Thor changes got rid of recently, mm -hmm. and Maya is going to keep, and mm -hmm. it's essentially for every day that you're in a liquidity pool, you get 
1% of impermanent loss protection mm -hmm. should you need it. Because if the fees mm -hmm. are more than that, then it doesn't even matter at all. Mm -hmm. But I had someone ask a question. They said at the very beginning with the 30 days and potentially a lot of people may be dumping, maybe they want to mm -hmm. sell. Is 10 million an internal, um, an impermanent loss protection of those cacao coins? Is there any fear or worry that that might not be enough backup mm -hmm. if the cow should fall? Or is mm -hmm. there a mechanism to kind of protect against that? Mm -hmm. Well, for, first off, our impermanent loss protection starts at day 50 of any LP position. So oh, okay. day 0 to 50 have 0% protection. And then day 50 to 150, it protects cacao underperforming your asset. Gotcha. And from day 50 to 450, it protects cacao overperforming your asset. So we, we have something called asymmetric ILP. So if, 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 your, if cacao goes down or your asset goes up, uh, cacao underperforming, we protect you more readily since because of cacao's underperformance, you have a greater loss. Where if it's the other way around, cacao goes up or your asset goes down, we protect you over a larger period so essentially we protect you less or, or less readily since you're performing better thanks to thanks to maya yeah so it's not fair to now socialize your loss uh when thanks to cacao you're you're better out so okay. with that in mind with that in mind or or, or ilp program will be around 30, 20 to 30 percent cheaper than thorchains and okay. thorchains in permanent loss protection program it hasn't cost them that much and now that it's been sunsetted, uh, the liability isn't that big either. Now, right. it would uh, uh, like also take into account ILP is only paid out if somebody withdraws. So even if you have a if there's an unrealized impermanent loss of ten percent or whatever or twenty percent, if that person doesn't withdraw because they want to keep their impermanent loss protection for later or because of some other reason. Uh, then that 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 loss is not realized, right? Uh, and the protocol doesn't have it. So then, what would it take? What would it take to use up the the? Uh, and also another thing to take into account is that the reserve is self replenishing. So as trading happens, ten percent of the fees go to the reserve. Okay, uh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. So the reserve is also growing, which is uh, something that Maya has thanks to liquidity nodes that make us makes us more efficient. We can afford to replenish the, the reserve while LPs and notes still earn uh, uh, more uh, comparatively. Okay. So with all of that into account, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. worst case, like in 150 days, uh, tier ones haven't really even uh, finished uh, withdrawing. So let's say every one, let's say 200 days happen, and cacao will own cacao 3x in price, uh, which would be very difficult to happen since if everybody's tier one and nobody has withdrawn yet, then that means cacao cannot have lost its value yet. Right. <laughs> because nobody has cacao to, to sell. Uh, but that'd be a pretty big cliff, right? At 200 days, yeah. if everyone's tier one, they're going to be able to withdraw if we go up here. But keep, keep in mind, if you withdraw, that doesn't really incur in permanent loss uh, into the protocol because the cacao price hasn't changed. It just happens when they withdraw asset side. And in that process, they pay, uh, they pay, um, how do you call it? Slippage fees. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then arbitrage probably will come back and set it back upright. So like, it's, it's not that straightforward gotcha. to make cacao price go down if there isn't cacao somewhere else. Uh, to, to come and sell it, uh, which is the benefit that all cacao is born out of the pool and the rest is in the reserve and nobody else has it. It means it's very difficult to topple its price. Very difficult. Uh, because it's all circulating already, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, it could happen that the reserve is depleted. It would be very difficult. It's definitely not happening the first 200 days. Yeah. Um, and uh, so this this withdrawal yeah. here, this is only withdrawing the cacao portion. Your asset stays in there for 200 days. It's no, 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 no. Every day you can withdraw 0.5 percent of your position. Okay. Symmetrically or asymmetrically. Okay. If you if you withdraw symmetrically, 
sold your 0.5 percent, you didn't change cacao price in the market, right? Because uh, you took, let's say, you have 150 of one thing, 150 on another thing, and you withdraw 50. You still have 100 and 100, still yeah, the yeah. same price. The price only changes if you withdraw asymmetrically to one or the other side. If you withdraw asymmetrically to cacao, you you take cacao away from the supply. You make cacao more expensive. What? Right. Uh, and you withdraw asset side, you're taking off uh, asset while keeping the same amount of cacao. You make cacao cheaper in price. Right. Uh, but in the process, every time you withdraw asymmetrically, it's taken as if you withdraw asymmetrically and then did a swap of half of your position to the asset incurring fees. So you, you pay fees when you withdraw asymmetrically. You can do it. You just pay fees. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and coming back to the tiers, because I think we jumped a bit in, in a tangent. Uh, tier threes essentially get a 33% haircut. Tier twos are locked up for three, uh, three times as many days and have a withdrawal one of them you go up to tier two. They have, nine, uh, that should be 90, by the way. Uh, I'll ask okay. you to change it. Uh, that should be 90 days and up to 1.5% during that time. They get a 10% shortcut, so an effective return of it. Lot plus trading fees. Um, and then tier one, where does this 33% and 10% go? To tier one. So it is not going to us or to protocol on liquidity. This goes out to tier one. Uh, so tier one get a boost. So not only a 2x, probably more. I, I suspect it will be around 3x. Okay. Uh, before you know, minus impairment loss plus trading fees. Yeah. Um, and they're locked up for 200 days. And this is actually also pretty smart because if you see that 33% of what tiers three gave is going from 30 days to a 200 day lockup. So the protocol is automatically pushing more liquidity toward the yeah. 200 days, okay. giving us the time to bootstrap the volume. Uh, so even if just one third is tier three, one third is tier two, one, one third is tier one, uh, what will happen is first tiers one get around three X return. Two, although only one third of the, of the liquidity was tier one, actually you end up having 50% of the liquidity be, be tier one after after the cacao donation. Right. So pretty interesting how it grows. Uh, so uh, anyway, that that's all like desired uh, that we have as most liquidity in tier one as possible, uh, since it will also help us stabilize uh, and, and bootstrap uh, the volume. Uh, but yeah, that's a bit on how tiers one work. So then going back to the roadmap, tier one liquidity is something we really want, right? Now, yeah. importantly, tier two and three liquidity, you can withdraw during the auction, not tier one liquidity. Tier one liquidity is something serious that you must do your own research to, to, to move forward and do. So be mindful of that. Uh, once you do, uh, you're essentially in. You can't be out anymore. Gotcha. So, now, with, with, with that in mind, the first uh, $5 million of liquidity, now going to your question, yep. uh, are getting 1% of the Maya token airdrop to them. Uh, and then the next $15 million, another 1%. Now, this might change now that I've been thinking of to exclude Rune. So we might reduce it to, say, $4 million and, and, and $12 million, something like that, uh, but just for non-Rune assets. So uh, gotcha. we will we will update the community if that happens. We're still weighing the options. Um, whereas the other 5%, because tier one liquidity gets another 5% airdrop over 500 days, uh, that will be including Rune and whatever else. Uh, but you must keep your position. So it's not enough to beat tier one. You still have to have like the airdrop of that Maya token is proportional to the liquidity. You still have at the 200, 350 and 500 day mark. So if you have a lot of tier one liquidity, but you withdrew all of it by day 400, you're getting zero on day 500. Gotcha. If you, or, if you, or if you withdraw half of it by day 400, you're just getting half. So they were super incentivizing tier one to stay for as long as possible uh, to get the maximum amount of all of these benefits. And I think people will be withdrawing. So those people that hang around until day 500 are going to get a bigger and bigger portion of that area. Uh, exactly. So we, oh. we benefit more and more the, the keepers. Yeah, uh, definitely. 
I, so, I, I am personally going to participate in tier one in all pools. So, uh, oh, cool. Yeah. That's a, that's a good bet if you want, because, because then I'll, I'll benefit off of the people that have paper hands. Yep. Uh, Smart. <laughs> Diversify into it. Yeah. So I want to get to the, um, because you mentioned bootstrapping it and what, uh, you know, to try to get this thing going to stabilize it. And you guys got some cool. So if I look at the long term, I, is there in the short term some integrations first few months? No, this is mostly the launch. We're not even going to talk yeah. about Aztec today. <laughs> yeah, no, thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> too far down the road. Another video. So long term here, this is awesome. So can you kind of walk through some of these integrations and what, what you might be expecting from each one? I saw Cardano. I thought this was super exciting because oh, they, yeah. don't, they don't really have much of a, they've, they've got, they always kind of mention their staking. They have a lot of money in staking, but their DeFi stuff is currently being built. They don't have a lot of TVL there. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, if you could just walk through some of these integrations and why you think they might be beneficial to, to kind of sure. lock things in at the beginning. So first off, something interesting to note is that when we launch, and thanks to the tiers, all of Cacao is in the pools. Yeah. So if you need, if we add a new chain and somebody wants to add LP for that new chain, they have to get Cacao from somewhere, right? So by they have sure. to do it by getting, by putting more assets into the pools, getting the Cacao and then using that Cacao for the new asset, LP. So they are adding TVL twice uh, while also increasing Cacao price. So we're very much uh, looking to have many integrations quickly, as quickly as we can, yeah. Uh, so that we create that initial volume to have more trading routes, which is obviously beneficial, but but also to make sure we counteract or or even uh, exceed withdrawals during that period. So if we're exceeding withdrawals, that means we're getting increasing TVL and increasing cacao price, right? As faster than people are withdrawing, which is something important. And this is Fresh, Dash, and Kuji, for instance, having them integrated is LP that is now not locked up. It's organic. It's there. Yeah. And it's kind of truly that didn't get cacao for free. So they don't have this incentive to, to, to lock in their gains. Uh, so with all of that in mind, uh, we're having our Dash integration as soon as possible. We already had it audited by Halborn and the, the final report is in. And uh, we, we will be adding it as soon as trading is enabled. Awesome. And then it's also very similar to to Cosmos Gaia, so we will be adding Kuji with or without USK. We're not sure of that yet. Also, a few days later, so very quick succession before Tier Three liquidity is is of the lockup. Then we're working on three, and we are not sure yet. We're we're still kind of pending economic and security reviews. For instance, BSC, the nodes are too heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's expensive to run it. Polygon, we have to look a lot on the decentralization. Uh, Osmo, they have a lot of inflation. So even if you have a pool, since we are not getting any staking rewards, uh, ah. we won't be able to compete with their staking. So we need to solve that yeah. too. Uh, so because all of that, uh, we, need to, we need to carefully consider each of them. And uh, we... We might do all three of them. We might just do one of them, uh, but it's definitely our, our first priority to have at least one or two here. And then Cardano, why is it later in the year? Cardano is a great fit for Maya for the reason that uh, it's a huge community with a lot of market cap, but very siloed. Very few options, decentralized options for them nowadays. Um, so that mean, that's just flying colors for us. So Cardano is a great fit, but uh, their cryptographic signatures are different. They use a different type of curve, whereas all of the assets you've seen added to ThorChain and the, the ones that are mentioned here use EXA. Uh, Cardano uses EDSA with a D instead of a C. So uh, what that means is it's just a, a lot more work on the threshold signature scheme part of things and the full node and Bifrost and all that. Gotcha. So... Uh, we, we're just allowing us enough enough runway to to work on that calmly, get it audited, and all all of that. Is anyone uh, from the Cardano side helping you guys out, or is that just strictly you guys? Building? Yeah, we we've met someone. We will do the initial work ourselves. We already have a lot of what we need 
thanks to uh, Sebastian Guillermot, for, for, uh, who is a, a developer there. He gave us a tour of everything related to Cardano, the documentation, uh, the, the easy easy wins there, and the the difficult uh, things you can you can just avoid, like the rat calls we shouldn't get into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's 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 done. Um, we just we prioritize that later in the year. Okay. Now, priority number one is always security, but priority number two uh, is volume. So we will be doing whatever is best for volume, which in the beginning also means a lot of integrations. So we'll be talking with wallets, UIs, all that to get Maya uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's higher than chain additions. So chain additions is the third priority, but still a high priority, especially to counteract withdrawals. So that's kind of what you can expect from us. We will always be like security, integrations, chains. That's kind of our, 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 our playbook for 2023. Okay. So how, I I do have a question kind of going back to like, you're you're kind of, when you mentioned adding these integrations, this would be fresh, like as part of the liquidity auction, you can't add Dash or Kuji. So Mm -hmm. where, where would they buy the cacao from? On the Mayapos, using Bitcoin or even. Okay, so they would have to, so they would have to. Let's say, Let's say it's you. You have Bitcoin. You want to add uh, to the Dash, uh, to the Dash uh, cacao pool. Uh-huh. You need to take your Bitcoin, buy cacao on the Bitcoin cacao pool on Maya. Yeah. Increasing the Bitcoin TVL and decreasing the cacao supply in the pool. So okay. increasing the cacao price, paying slip based fees in the meantime. Yeah. And take your cacao, bring it over to add cacao and Dash adding TVL yet again. Gotcha. Would okay. they be able, would they be able to do single sided? Like if someone had, let's yes. say they had a thousand dollars in Kuji, could they just say, I'm going to drop all Kuji and then it gets split. Like Maya would do yeah. that on the back end. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we, we will see the dash cacao first. And uh, once yeah. it's seeded, you can now go single sided. Okay. Uh, so the, the first person adding liquidity must do it symmetrically to pre- to set the price yeah. of the pool. All the rest can go in asymmetrically and it's not a problem. And then we will obviously, as soon as we can, add savers. So yeah. even that's a possibility for Dash. Okay. Yeah. One question. So if if you guys are, what's great about this, what I like about this is there's no um, emissions. There's no mm-hmm. cacao emissions to drive volume to the pools. I do like that because it's not a fake, you know, you're not going to get mercenary capital coming in just trying to get that and then bounce in when it drops. Mm-hmm. Do you, what, aside from being able to get the, the, the fees from the liquidity pool, is that really the only incentive that anybody has to come and add to the liquidity pool? Like, well, well, nodes, nodes bond LP units in Maya. Mm-hmm. So to, to get an extra yield, you can just upgrade your LP to nodes bond LP. And that gets you cacao on top of your liquidity rewards. Okay. So that's kind of the, the first front incentive. Uh, then, yes, we're very huge fans of real yield um, because then we we will know exactly where we are and not kind of uh, um, cosmetically make it go away under yeah. the rug by by pushing over uh, cacao. Now, do, do, do note that if we're all in the pools, if we're all in the same pools and no cacao is out of the pools, if we do these block rewards emissions into into the pools, uh, we're all just we still end up with the same dollar value. You see that? Yeah. We, let's say 100% of the liquidity of the cacao is in the pools. Forget about the reserve for now. And we mint new cacao, and we put it in the pools and say this is APY. Be happy. It didn't really do anything. Right. Because there's now more cacao, so cacao is worth less, uh, and, and it just netted off zero for you yeah. guys. When is inflation net positive for you? Is when there's people holding, right? Holding outside of the pools, and you inflate the token. What you're doing is taxing the ones holding, yes. right? Yeah. And putting it here. Because of that, what Maya has is something called dynamic inflation. Dynamic inflation is zero when more than 90% of cacao is in the pools. 
uh, uh, ignoring again the reserve. So if you have 90 million cacao in the pools and then 9 million leave the pools to be held or to be in central exchanges or to do whatever, you now have 81 million left or less. Yep. Then I make inflation starts to kick in very small at the beginning. And all of that inflation is going into the pools. So you're taxing the holders. Yeah. And going into the, pools. the further down you go from 90%, the higher this inflation is, right? So it's increasing, 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 just to make sure that people then go back to the pools and taxing every time more the holders and giving more benefit to the LPs, so they go back, right? Okay. So uh, the good thing is it can be zero if we're all in the pools. So once we have the real yield kick in, and hopefully that's before people can withdraw and we never get below 90%, yeah. then that will, that will mean that uh, we never inflated beyond 100 million and we were always real yield. And that's the point. But and we also have this backdrop where if, if we go down, then dynamic inflation can kick in to help us bring them back to the pool. And that dynamic inflation, there's no burn mechanism though, right? So if, if, you, if, you, if you mint some cacao to add it into the pools to tax the holders, you wouldn't then, as holders, jump back into the pool. Are you burning that back out of the pool? Or does that stay in there as a benefit to those that were already no. in the pool? Exactly. Those that were LP got it, donated to their LP position. So the dollar value increased. Yeah. And then the new holder that came back in didn't get it. So they, they had That's a net, permanent net increase loss. in the uh, in the max supply of cacao in that instance. Okay. Yeah. Now, now worry not. We do have some ideas to then burn it. Okay, uh, cool. I can't, <laughs> can't, share, can't share that. Uh, uh, like right now we're neutral with some small inflation if things go sour. Okay. Uh, but we also have some ideas of how to make cacao deflationary even before lending future from Thor Chain. Right. So be on the lookout for that. Sweet. Can't share yet, no. but uh, we- That was we enough, are Alpha. Fans. That was enough. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we're, we're definitely huge fans of, of real yield here at Maya. And that's, it's at the end of the day, it's reality. Like infl inflation is, is something people do just mm -hmm. to uh, delay the problem. Uh, so if you're just inflating, 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 you're just having the bomb uh, uh, explode at a later date. Uh, 100%. Um, we're doing that instead with the lockups. Uh, so we have six months to grow up. But after that, it's, it's, uh, we, need to, we need to get the real yield. That's it. Yeah, no, awesome. Awesome. I like the I like the sound of that. So then uh, I do have I do have one community question about savers. Just to kind of wrap mm -hmm. things up, this has been great. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you've covered just about everything there. And then I'll give you one uh, an opportunity. Actually, is there anything that you want to add that we haven't talked about that you think is important for people to know? Yeah, well, just uh, you said, do your own research. Uh, yep. Just um, be do that relaxedly. You have 21 days of auction where you can very, very carefully weigh your options. We're not we're fans of real yield, and we're fans of not instilling fake urgency or hype. So you have more than enough time. Don't ape into it. There's aside from the tier one kind of early benefit. There's no really any other benefit to be in the liquidity auction earlier. Uh, feel free to be adding towards the tail end of these. Um, just make sure you're weighing your options, doing what's best for your pro portfolio. Uh, this is still DeFi, so uh, don't bet your house here, please. Right. And uh, uh, we we welcome you to Maya. Uh, and uh, this is kind of the community we have. Uh, we like things being done mindfully. So uh, that, that's the only thing I would like to add. Uh, just and research for ducks. Good point. Good point. On our okay, no cool. Way. Yeah, I'll I'll put a link to uh, Alex's Twitter, also the Discord and this uh, the white paper. I guess you would call this the docs. I'll have this mm -hmm. down in the description for sure. And uh, one thing that you did just mention about the twenty one days and not being a rush. Fortunately, this is a fair liquidity auction, so it does not matter. Aside from the benefit he said about being early with that one percent mm -hmm. airdrop. Everyone gets the same price. So it doesn't matter if you're first in, exactly. last in. It doesn't matter if it's a whale and you've got maybe 100 bucks or $1 or whatever it is that you're investing. 
everybody's going to come out at the same price, which I thought was awesome when I learned about that. Exactly. Exactly. So, it, this is the, look, I really think we will set a standard uh, of how a fair launch should be. Like we're, we're checking all the symmetric information, same uh, uh, opportunity to learn and they have a long 21 day period with it. So even if they just found out about the launch on 7th of March, they have three weeks to do their diligence. Yeah. Um, number two, it's maximizing the bootstrap liquidity at the beginning. Uh, you give nothing to the team, only the, the uh, percentage of the utility over time. So we can we, like we can do anything. And you can't even sell get special treatment. Yeah, we can't even sell it, you know. Uh, and we get from from for every nine dollars the community earns we earn one, you know, yeah. which is I think um, it's also a price discovery mechanism. So we're not like, but wait, what's the price I'm getting cacao by? Like for depends on the auction. Like if we raise a lot, then it will be a higher price. If we ra don't raise that much, it's at a lower price. Which is fair, you know. Yeah. If it's a large, if it's a larger protocol, it's worth more. So it makes sense that your share in it is worth more. Uh, it's more expensive, essentially. Um, it's a uh, fixed supply. Like I just. Yeah, uh, you can read more about why, why we chose this model. Uh, we we kind of designed it ourselves, and we think it's it will be a no brainer for for protocols in the future. Uh, and and it, the communities should should really demand that protocols of the future launch in a similar way. Like it's not fair what happened in the last few years of people being rugged, dumped on, mis uh, 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 misguided. Um, just you know, had this rush and then lost money because of you know deploying the contract many times, uh, or got you know just because they didn't know how to use a terminal, got a worse deal than the savvy coder that was able to do it with a UI stuff like that. So we're not fans of that. Here, just take your time, it's all fine, fine and dandy, and you get the deal because it's a one that everybody got. Period. So yeah, I like On it. To your question. On to your question about savers. Yeah, yeah. One question. I don't even know if it's going to have to be quick. So I'm recording. It's almost at the one hour mark already. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So is Maya, this is about savers. Uh, if Maya, let me throw it on here. Is Maya going to have support for savers? I think I already alluded to it. Yes, we'll have that. Will it use the same configuration parameters, the store chain, or do the nodes, do you guys still, do you guys start to kind of go rogue and do your own thing with your own configurations? Or do you stick mm -hmm. to, what Thorchain has kind of built. Yeah, we, we're still backwards compatible. So we could decide to have the same type of savers. Uh, and savers will mostly work the same way. Like you have, you meet your 15th fault. That's how it works on Thorchain. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just withdraw, right? The, the difference here is I don't think savers uh, yield should be half of LP yield. It seems logical since they're taking on like less risk. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they just put in half of the asset, they get half of the yield. The problem is the other question. How much more risk are savers introducing to LP? -ing? And that's that's how much yield they have to pay out to the LP. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because of that, on Maya, we're looking to, uh, we're enable savers as and what we're looking to have is that the yield to savers as a percentage of LP yield increases from say to zero, the closer to the, the, the synth depth gets to the synth cap. Uh, so technical, if you're not in too much into savers, you can gladly ask questions on the Discord. But what that cause is that uh, the more savers there are and the more synths there are, that it's introducing more risk to LPs, the more of the yield that these participants are foregoing to the LPs, gotcha. uh, which is good. So you're giving more risk to LPs, well, you're paying them more. And then it, the fact that it goes down to zero when it gets closer to the synth cap, not at the synth cap, so even a bit before, means that we won't have this part that happens in Torchin nowadays where the um, we're reaching the synth cap and now uh, arbitrage cannot effectively use things because it's filled up by savers, which yeah. is a problem. And um, yeah, Torchin is looking to solve this with POL. 
Uh, we will have POL as well, but for different reasons and for different usage. So in, 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 with that in mind, we will not be having uh, um, kind of the same functionality in that regard. We will make details public during the auction about this, so no worries. Uh, but yeah, we, we're having a slight difference in philosophy. Uh, cool. Now, it, it might work better how we're planning it. Always happy to have Fortune emulate us back. We, we, we have emulated them more than enough. So they're welcome to, to take any of our philosophies and apply them. Um, yeah, and it's good. Like We're two participants in the same space with roughly the same things, just twitching a bit, uh, tweaking a bit, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, which I think is good for innovation and for constant iteration. And this will benefit the end users, right? Yeah. Uh, when we as for LPs, so um, cool. Importantly, well, no, I, I'll talk about this on this with my ex. I could talk about this for hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're, we're just quick mention. This fact that the savers yield is more variable will actually make savers value more stable. Like the, it, it feels like, oh, now you're introducing uh, uh, variability, more variability to savers uh, uh, yield, quite the contrary. The fact that right now it's indexed to LPs as half of the yield, and this one is variable, mm -hmm. means that this moves up and down with LP yield. Yeah, the fact that we're decoupling it by decreasing when 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 the synth cap is uh, um, neared is that sa some savers will withdraw when it's too low, and then when it's too high, more savers will come in, lowering it. So that would mean that it will actually tend to a value. If BTC savers think for the risk they should get yeah. around two percent, it will be at two percent. If, because if it were three percent, more people will join and it will lower it. Or if it's one percent, some people will withdraw, increasing it. The control, so it will, yeah. It, the it control will actually is on the depositor's side, as opposed yeah, exactly. to the depositor having to react to the pool's fluctuation in the uh, in the APRs. That's what it sounds like. Just cool. Am I freezing on you? Well, this was a, a great call. Yeah. Yeah, I froze for a bit. You're back. <laughs> cool. um, thank you so much for having us. Uh, you said it was going to be around 30 minutes. I think we failed. I think so too. <laughs> We're at an hour and there's still, yeah, more questions I have and whatnot. And like you said, you could keep going on about it. Um, yeah, we'll have to yeah. maybe do another one of these once the auction happens and then maybe after launch just to get some updates out there as, uh, as things oh, yeah. happen. We'll have to see. Be look, on the lookout for part two then, guys. All right. Thank you everybody for joining in to listen and see you next week in the auction. Welcome All to right. Maya. Thanks, Alex. Awesome. I'll see you later. Bye-bye, guys.